Today, I'm here to help you get a better understanding of your Concept2 performance monitor. For those that are new to the channel, I'm Austin with Training Tall, and you might not be able to tell from this video, but I'm six foot eight. But Training Tall is all about giving you the tips and strategies to help you take your fitness and health above the average, no matter how tall you are. And the performance monitor on the Concept2 rowing machines is one of the best features about them. But there's a lot going on. And so in this video, I hope to help you better understand all of its features, all of its functions, but I'm gonna break the video down into a few different parts. The first part, we're gonna discuss what the actual rowing display screen is showing you and the different options that you can see while you're actually rowing. The second part is gonna go through how to understand your results through the memory function. And the last part is gonna help you better understand the options and settings that if you really spend some time with those are gonna help you get the most out of your workouts. So if you wanna bounce around the video or hop to a specific part, you can see the timestamps written down here if you're interested in just one of those parts. So let's get right to it then. If you sit down on your Concept2 rower and you start rowing, or if you press this Just Row button here in the top right hand corner, you'll start seeing some numbers being displayed as you row. If we look down here at the bottom of our monitor, there's a couple different buttons that you should be aware of. There's the Units button, there's the Display button, and then there's the Menu button. The Menu button just brings you back to the menu if you wanna program in a workout or check your settings or whatever. But these other two buttons, the units and the display, those are the ones that we're gonna mess with here. And by the way, the stuff that I'm talking about here applies also to PM4 and PM3 monitors. Your buttons just say change units and change display. But for the most part, this, this stuff is all the same. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna play around with the change display because as you hit change display, you're gonna see the display change, who would have thought? And we're gonna start things off here on this very simple screen. This is sort of the enlarged view that as you're rowing, gives you sort of the bare basics that you would want to know when you're rowing. You've got your time displayed on top that's just showing you how long you've been rowing for. You've got your intensity shown as a few different things. I'll talk about that in a second. We've got our distance written down below that. And then you've got your strokes per minute or your stroke right here in the bottom left-hand corner. Now I talked about this intensity level right here. That is where our units button comes into play because with our units, Concept2 mainly helps us understand our rowing through the units of either split per 500 meter, calories per hour, or watts. And on this basic display, this big number here in the center is showing your instantaneous level of power output. That's because every stroke, whatever intensity you bring, it might go up, it might go down, it's all your responsibility to row as consistently as you can for the most part. Now, as far as understanding what those numbers are, if we go here to the split per 500 meter, or I like to think of it more as a pace per 500 meter, think about if you were running with a fitness watch outside and it was showing you your pace per mile. You run faster, your pace per mile goes down, right? You, row, you run slower, your pace per mile goes up. It's the same thing, it's a pace per 500 meters. So if you row with more intensity, the pace goes lower. If you row with less intensity, the pace goes up. The reason why that's the most common function used by rowers is because it doesn't have as much variability compared to the units of watts or calories per hour. If we use our units button here and go, uh, if we hit uh, the split per 500 meter again, you'll notice here it replaced the distance with your average split per 500 meters. So know that you'd actually have to hit it twice to get to the other units. But this would show you your average over the culmination of all of your strokes, while this big one is still showing you your instantaneous. So this one's good for if you're doing a long distance row and you're working on a consistent output. If we hit units, we go into watts here, and this is showing you essentially how hard you're rowing as a true measure of force, of power. You row harder, watts increase. You row softer, watts go down. But they have a wide variety. You can row as light as like 20 watts, but you can row as intense as upwards of like 1200 plus watts for the absolute elite rowers. It has a lot more variability than the split or the pace per 500 meter. If we hit units again, it changes to calories per hour. This unit has even more variability to it. It works kind of the same way as watts though, as watts do. If you row with more intensity, the, watt, the calories per hour is increased. It's showing you at that rate, you're burning about that many calories per hour. However, of course, your body type is going to, in your age, that's all going to actually depend, that's actually going to determine your calories per hour. But for the most part, it's just a, it's, it's consistent between people, even though it might not be necessarily accurate for you. 
but you could row as light as 100 calories per hour if you didn't put any pressure behind your strokes, or you could row upwards of 2,000 calories per hour if you were rowing with a lot of intensity. That's not to say you'd burn 2,000 calories in an hour, because it'd probably be at an unsustainable pace, but again, it's showing you the instantaneous, right? While it's below, it's showing you uh, the calories that you'd burn, so the actual physical calories themselves. Again, it varies from person to person, but we'll get more into that later. Point is, split per 500 meter is the most consistent unit as far as it doesn't change as much and it helps you to build consistency, which is really important, especially if you're a beginner. Plus, when it comes to pacing yourself for things like specific rows, like a 2000 meter row, for instance, you would wanna know your pace time, that way you can accurately calculate your finish time. Because if you're rowing at calories per hour, who knows how long 2,000 meters would take you. Anywho, that's the units button. And I recommend that, especially if you're a beginner, to stick with the split per 500 meter and get familiar with those numbers throughout your rowing workouts. Now we also have our change display. We started things off here on this big, um, sort of blown up display, but if we hit display again, it brings us to the sort of fully encompassing view that gives us a little bit more of an understanding of our metrics. So we can see the timer written on top, the strokes per minute, that's your stroke right now, is in the top right hand corner. And then we're back to our average or our instantaneous pace per 500 meter. Below that is your distance. Below that is your average pace per 500 meter. So now we get to see both of those, the distance and the average pace. Below that is your split meters. We'll talk about that a little bit more when it comes to programming in our workouts. And then below that is a projected distance of after 30 minutes of rowing. It's not the most important thing in the world unless you're curious about how many meters you could row in 30 minutes straight. Uh, and again, that would change based off of your intensity throughout. So it's constantly computing what that would be based off of your intensity. This is a screen to get yourself familiar with because it's nice to know your current distance and it's nice to know your average pace as well. That's just gonna help you keep on track with your intervals, with your workouts. And this is the preferred screen to row with in most cases, in my opinion. If we change through the display again, we can now go to the force curve display where the top half of the screen is showing us again our time, our strokes per minute, our pace per 500 meters, and our distance, which you could also change if you hit units. Again, you could change the distance to show you your average split instead. But below that in the second half is showing you your force curve. And I've done a whole video on the force curve and how you can understand this, but it's to help you sort of see how smooth your rowing stroke is. If it has any sort of peaks or spikes at random points, this is a good way to help you practice rowing at a consistent force throughout your stroke. And again, if you're interested in understanding the force curve more, you can check out my video on understanding the force curve more. Hitting display again brings you to the pace boat screen. Now there's not really anything you can do with the pace boat screen sort of on the just row, if you just pick up the handle and started going, but we'll get more into pace boat stuff when we talk about programming our workouts. And the last display we have is the watts graph. And what this does is this creates a bar chart or a bar graph that is displaying how many watts that you're rowing per stroke. Not necessarily the number of watts specifically, but how your watts are changing, how your effort, your output is changing stroke to stroke. And so as you row along, which by the way, it counts about 50 strokes in a row before it starts to slide the graph, it shows you your intensity relative stroke to stroke. So if you started off a row very intensely and started to die off, the graph would show you that. If you were nice and consistent from start to finish, the graph would show a nice, fairly even bars across the board and vice versa. So it's a good way to help you understand how to pace yourself through the start and finish of a row, especially on the long distance rows. So that's a display setting that you might wanna consider using from time to time. So spend some time with these different displays now that you have a general idea of how they work and just get used to the different numbers and the different metrics that it's showing you as you work on your rowing form. And over time, they're gonna become way more second nature and it's not gonna be so overwhelming. All right, next up, we're gonna get into programming your monitor for specific workouts because Concept2 has a whole variety of different ways that you can do that on the performance monitor. So let's get right into it. Select workout is where you wanna go. You hit select workout and you're brought to this whole big list of things. There's the standard list, the custom list, the re-row list, and the new workout. If you click on standard list, this gives you a nice little breakdown of just some common rowing distances and rowing workouts that you might wanna try for your first couple times. You've got a 2,000 meter row, 5,000 meter row, that's a big one, 10,000 meter row, holy smokes, 
30 minute row for a timed row instead of a distance row. And then they've got intervals as well. 500 meter row with one minute rest. If you clicked on that one, you would just be repeating intervals of that. So that's just the standard list, a little quick selection of a few different workouts that you can try. If you hit menu, you can go back to the original screen and then you can check out the custom list. Now this gets into a few different more advanced style intervals. We can see here, we've got the 30 seconds on 30 seconds rest or 30 seconds off style of intervals. And then you've got the intervals, uh, uh, pyramid intervals. So we can click on this one here for a little bit more detail. It shows that, okay, this workout seven intervals, starts off minute on, minute off, two minutes on, two minutes off, three, three, four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one, works your way down. If you're like, cool, let's do it, you'd hit continue. If you're like, nah, not for me, bro, you hit menu back and then it brings you back here. And again, you can select through the variety of different rows here. They've even got the marathon row down there for you crazies out there. So those first two buttons are essentially just a list of pre-selected workouts that you can just pick and do. And we're gonna skip the re-row button for now, and we're gonna look at the new workout. And this is what I generally recommend for any workout that you do, even if the workout that you wanna do is in this, is in the standard or the custom list, I recommend that you get used to programming in your workouts by selecting new workout. So if we check this out, we're brought to another menu where we can check out single distance, single time, single calorie or intervals. And for these first three settings, they're pretty much exactly how it sounds. If you were gonna hit single distance, here on this screen you can program what distance you wanna row. This is the row in meters. We've got a few different um, buttons here on the side to help us program the rows. We've got this plus and minus key which adds or subtracts the number on whatever, uh, what is that, the tenth, the hundredth or the thousandth, uh, what is that? I don't even know what that's called. <laughs> the number slot. You can scroll through your number slots using this top right arrow key or the button below the plus and the minus to sort of slide through the number slots. <laughs> and you and after you've programmed your distance, let's say we want to row 3,000 meters. We could bump that plus, boop, to 3,000. We can scroll our way down here and take a look at change split length. Now split length is what we saw on that advanced screen at the bottom where it showed split meters. What a split length is, is this is how it's going to break down your results summary. So for instance, if we wanted to, let's see, if we wanted to get 10 intervals of like basically seeing how we did 10, throughout 10 different checkpoints in the workout, well then we could change our split length here to 300 meters. And that means every 300 meters, in our results summary, it's going to report our metrics. So if you wanted to see a bunch of metrics, you would wanna set the split length to a lower number. If you didn't care as much, and let's say you wanted to just know the start, the middle, and the finish, then maybe you could change the split length here to just a 1,000 split length, and it would display your results based off of the first thousand, the middle thousand, and the third thousand. So we can change the split length there, and then we've also got our pace boat. Remember that setting, the whole display of the pace boat you can use that setting to essentially set yourself a goal pace. Let's say you wanted to hold a two minute pace for the entirety of 3000 meters. What you could do is set your pace boat here to a two minute split per 500 meter. And then using that pace boat display, you would actually be rowing along with a boat that's going at that two minute pace per 500 meter pace. And so you can sort of see where you are relative to the boat as you go throughout your row. It's a great way to help you pace yourself consistently from start to finish. You by no means need to have a pace boat. In fact, most of the time I recommend not using a pace boat and just, again, working in, to understand your own numbers before you set those goals for yourself. And same with changing the split length. Generally, you can just leave it to whatever it pre-programs it to. And then when you check your summaries, it usually gives you five intervals of whatever that's whatever your row was, five sort of checkpoints. That's the standard that it does. But you can ma manipulate those options if you so choose. Now, if we, I keep hitting my head on the monitor, blink. If we go back, it's the same style for single time. You could set the specific time, which would mean you could also change the split length of the time intervals reported in the result summary. Same with setting a pace boat, and same goes for single calorie. It's very common in the CrossFit community to do a calorie row. You can set the row to essentially be as long as it takes to burn whatever number of calories that you set it to. And again, you can change the split length to be at how was my pace every 10 calories over the course of a 50 calorie row, for instance. And of course, you can set the pace boat too.
So that's the general workout setup for the distance, time, and calorie as far as doing that in one go. But the interval section is where things get fun and this is where you can really have some fun and variety with your workouts. Now if we go to intervals, we can see here that we've got intervals for distance, time, calories, or variable, which is variable is essentially a combination of the three. But if we take a look here at intervals distance, the display changes slightly. You set up your interval that you want to row. Let's say we wanted to do sets of 300 meters. We could change our set distance to 300 and let's say we wanted to give ourselves two minutes of rest in between each interval. You could use that top arrow to scroll the number slots down to the set rest time. You want to make sure you're highlighting the minute section there and you can say, okay, give myself two minutes of rest. Is that what I said? Minute 30? I can't remember. Let's say we set a minute 30 rest in between. Minute 30, you can use the arrow keys to slide around just like that. So you, what you would do is after you set this, you'd hit the OK button here in the bottom and your monitor will row intervals of 300 and minute 30 rest on repeat infinitely until you hit menu back. So if you keep rowing the intervals, they'll keep ticking up. I believe the, the intervals cap off at around 30 intervals on the PM5s, but point is it's not, you, you don't set it for, I wanna do eight intervals or 12 intervals. You essentially just hit menu back after your last interval during the rest and that will cap the end of the workout. And guys, again, this applies to the set time. You can do intervals of minute on, minute off if you so choose. You could go to the calories and do calorie intervals, 20 calories of rowing, minute or two off, or whatever it might be. It's the same style. And then like I said, intervals variable allows you to mix and match. Maybe one interval you could do a calorie interval where you wanna row for 50 calories and let's say let's take two minutes of rest time in between. You hit okay. But the next one, you wanna row for a distance. And so let's say you want to row for 700 meters this time, but the same two minutes rest, you hit OK, and then it goes interval three. And then when you're done, you just hit no more intervals. And this will actually cap the end of your workout at the end of whatever your last interval was. You hit no more intervals, and you can start to row. So those are the basics of setting up your workouts. Have some fun with it. Program in some intervals that maybe you see from the workouts that you find online or workouts that you can check out from my ebook as well. But get yourself in the process of programming your workouts each and every time. The process will become a lot more fluid, a lot more natural, and again, a lot less overwhelming. So you did your workout. You sweated a lot. You worked really hard. And now you want to check how your performance was throughout your workout. Well, it is the performance monitor, isn't it? Well, we can check that through the memory button. So if you tap the memory button, you can see a few different displays here. You can see the summary, which is just gonna show you the entire lifetime of your rowing machine, which if you're buying a used machine, this isn't really gonna mean much to you because a lot of people might have used it before you, or if you're in a commercial gym, none of this probably means anything to you, but if it's your monitor, brand new, spanking out of the box, and only you've used it, this could be some interesting stuff, as it shows you the total lifetime meters, your average split, the number of workouts, and a lot of cool other stuff. But we wanna check our workouts. In a few different options here, you can check out your workouts by hitting list by date or list by type. In my opinion, just hit list by date because that's just gonna show you the workouts in the order that you did them. If you hit list by type, you gotta remember, okay, was I doing the distance rows, the timed rows, the variable ones? Just hit list by date and that's gonna show you the order in which you did your workouts in. And you can see here that I've done a variety of different rows, a lot of 20 minute rows. And you can use these arrow keys to slide through the different workouts, which are all dated based off of as long as your monitor is programmed for the correct date. And after you find the workout that you want to check on, let's check down here at this May 22nd 20 minute row. And if I hit this magnifying glass here, that's going to show me my results. And looking at the results screen, we can see that this was broken down into five different um, five different chunks of sort of checking in. It checked me in at the four minute mark, the eight minute mark, the 12, the 16, and the 20 minute mark. And as we look through these different columns, we can see that the, the column to the left, I'm sorry, to the right of the time is showing us the meters. The top row showing the total meters that were rowed. And then below that, breaking down the meters that were rowed at each of the, between each of those different checkpoints. Same goes for the split per 500 meter average that was on my screen and the stroke rate as well. What's cool is that you can also check your watts and your calories per hour, even if you rode your whole workout using the split per 500 meter setting. If you hit change units here, it'll scroll, th it'll scroll through your average watts as well as your calories per hour as well. So you'll be able to see all of those metrics here in the results setting. 
And that just gives you a basic breakdown of your different workouts. So spend some time looking at those. And um, again, the more you look at your results and try to understand them with the rest intervals, with the work intervals, with the changing split lengths, et cetera, the less overwhelming it will be over time and the more power you will have over your results and your progress going forward. All right, guys, the last thing I want to show you here on the monitor is understanding the more options setting. In more options, there's a couple things that you want to be aware of here. If you would like to uh, send your workouts onto Concept2's online logbook, which is a great way to enter in the seasonal challenges and compare yourself to others within your own gender categories, age groups, et cetera, you wanna make sure that you've connected your rowing machine to your ERG data app on your smartphone. And once you've opened up the ERG data app, you wanna make sure that you go to your more option setting and you hit turn wireless on. When you hit turn wireless on, that's gonna help you sync your rowing machine to your ERG data app. So just letting you know that setting is right there. Now if we hit menu back, another thing that you wanna be aware of here, one of the most important things is your drag factor. That's the resistance that you feel when you row. And if we hit display drag factor right here, I've done a couple of videos on drag factor, but what this will do is this will show you a number, which is kind of an arbitrary number, but is showing you a computed resistance that you're feeling per stroke. That drag factor is adjusted by the dial on the side of your rowing machine. And for the most part, Concept2 recommends rowing at a resistance between 100 and 140 drag factor. And depending on your rowing machine and its usage, the position that the dial actually is in to achieve that drag factor is gonna be different. If you're on an older machine that's seen more wear and tear, the dial is gonna have to be higher set up to achieve that 100 to 140 drag factor. Whereas if you're on a newer machine, you might achieve that drag factor somewhere between the number two and the number five on the dial. But this is the setting that you wanna be at. So take some strokes to see where the drag factor is and then play with the needle up or down to move the drag factor within that range. If you're looking for a more specific range, I recommend somewhere between 115 and 130 drag factor. Generally, if you fall somewhere in there, it's gonna be great for a majority of your workouts. You can also connect your heart rate monitor in the more options setting as well. You can hit connect heart rate monitor. And if you're like me who owns a polar heart rate monitor, it will not show up here. If you say your belt's not listed, it's gonna show you that there's only a select few um, types of heart rate monitors that this machine actually picks up. So you might wanna track your heart rate on a separate app if you're using a monitor that's not supported by the Concept2 monitor. And for the most part, those are the important things to know about your Concept2 performance monitor. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something new. Let me know what you learned new or was anything like revolutionary, mind-blowing to you. Let me know down in the comments below. And I know it was a long video, so I appreciate you watching to the end. If you're interested in rowing workout plans that are structured and written by me, you can check out my rowing eBooks linked on my website. And you can also get into my Row 20 personalized VIP coaching program where I can coach you and your rowing form over the course of 20 days. It's a super awesome program to be a part of. You can check out more info for that on my website too. But thank you guys as always for watching. Hope you liked it and I will see you in the next video.